Well, my argument has always been that if volunteers keep coming in and the money keeps coming in, I have my name out there. I mean, to walk away now, you know, would be wrong. And we've had 11 people offer themselves. They've been in the debate. They've been on the stage. We're done at three. So how, why, you know, people who argue will just fade away. Of course, those are mostly the people in the media who would, who would like that to happen. But, uh, no, I, I, you know, there's obviously some shortcomings because it would be great to have a lot more delegates signed up. But at the same time, compared to what? Compared to where we were a year ago, I would say that uh, we have rallied a lot of troops, and I have said it so many times that the numbers out there were far greater. And you know yourself that I was very reluctant to do this, believing that there hadn't been enough changes, not enough groundwork, not enough philosophic uh, understanding. But so I have been pre impressed with that, and that's why it's important to continue this momentum. Simply put, and I'd like you to elaborate on on my take, we have built the base. People now in the popular vernacular, uh, it's now uh, North American Union, inflation tax, uh, the fact that both parties are pro-war and there's not a dime's worth of difference. All of these issues now are, are openly being discussed, and big Republican pundits are admitting that your campaign, at the bare minimum, has exposed the fact that the Republican Party, with its current leadership, is completely bankrupt, and there's nothing Republican or conservative about them. This is a massive sea change, and revolutions don't happen overnight. I mean, I many people could never have imagined that it would have gotten as big as it got. And, you know, and there are two articles now, uh, Doug Weed and also Newsmax have come out, and their spin on it is we've won. You know, it's never going to be the same again. You know, the country won't be the same. The Republican Party won't be the same. Uh, because what has been uh, started here, so this is uh, this is to me uh, very encouraging. But it it really does, you know. I, I just feel like I've taken a risk, and maybe I'll get some feedback on this today and tomorrow about what kind of numbers we might get in Washington. But just think how many people are sick and tired of the IRS, and they don't want another tax in its place. How many people are are sick of the Federal Reserve System and understand it? You know, and I've said on your program before. But the loudest applause right now, or essentially, other than the war, has been the uh, the, uh, um, the Federal Reserve System. This, to me, is so impressive that a lot of young people have been educated, you know, on college campuses that they're screaming out against the Federal Reserve System. And with the dollar going to the dogs, and with this uh, war continuing, and McCain saying we should stay for 100 years, it really is a great opportunity for us to keep the momentum going. On the McCain front, I interviewed Vietnam veterans uh, head just uh, last week, and he said that they're throwing everything they can behind defeating McCain. He is also the head of uh, the big uh, motorcycle veterans group, Rolling Thunder, that's gotten as many as 600,000 motorcycles uh, in D.C. Uh, I think that if you tie this in, which you've even said that you're staying in also to go after McCain, that that if you tie it in and reach out to Rolling Thunder, I think there's a good chance that uh, we could get Rolling Thunder there as well. Wouldn't that be something to have them come and join? And they have on a small way. I think I had a rally. But some of them showed up in Texas a couple times. But if it was a national thing, you you know, you can't ever tell what this might turn into. It, uh, they, if it's big going to be pretty hard to ignore us. This is in its embryonic uh, phase right now, but as you uh, say in your message, we've only got a few months uh, now until the primary is locked up, so we need to go ahead and set a date. When are we going to see a date? I mean, is the campaign going to set that date, and how long until we get that date? Well, it's going to be soon. I talked to somebody this morning. Matter of fact, I'm on my way back to D.C., Probably this evening, I am going to be driving by certain areas in D.C. that are available. And right now in my mind, I'm thinking Memorial Day weekend or Fourth of July weekend, depending on the space and the time and, and whether people think we need until, you know, the extra six weeks to wait till the Fourth of July. But, uh, you know, it would be pretty neat if you could do something on the Fourth of July. That really might be the, a great time to do it. I think that's the time to do it, just from a gut level. And I think having more time, having a month and a half extra, uh, I totally agree. Uh, so you're going to go to D.C., you're going to drive around, and we, we should hear in the next few days, Congressman? 
Hopefully I can make that decision uh, because I had somebody visiting down there on, on the technique on how you reserve these places and, and uh, how you uh, do it in a proper manner. Uh, probably wouldn't have, uh, you know, it's more difficult and more complex to do marches through the city. You know, that's, that's more difficult. I'm thinking of just having a grand rally. You know, that would be a, a little uh, easier to manage. So uh, these, these are the thoughts right now. I, I take a little risk revealing that much until they're solidified, but thought your listeners might be interested. But I am interested in finding out. You, your response was very positive. I'm hoping the response from others will be the same. Oh, people want to physically you know, be part of the movement. They want to see that it's going to continue on, and I keep trying to explain to the minority out there, but it is a large minority uh, that is upset that this is a process. Uh, I mean, you have been in and out of Congress. You've had victories. You've had defeats. That's what life is all about. But if we don't get out on the field, in the arena, we're never going to save this country, never save this society. No, and, and I think that's probably what persuaded me to do something a year ago. I kept thinking that we needed more time. But time is moving quickly when you look at uh, the deterioration of our foreign policy and our commitments overseas that we can't afford. But to me, I keep looking back and harping on the dollar. When dollars, the dollar value goes down, that means there's a vote against confidence. In Congressman, stay right there. Stay right there. was a highway man along the coach roads I did ride with sword and pistol by my side final segment with congressman Paul we're gonna get Jesse Benton on later in the day he's addressing a city council right now to talk more about the rally that uh, will probably be set for July 4th or um, a date around there we have congressman Paul with us right now he's gonna stay in the race continue to get delegates uh, continue to educate uh, the people uh, other points that need to be made. We see the economy worsening. We see these cables being cut. More talk of attacking Iran now from Israel. Can you speak about the economy and the situation with the war? Well, you know, people now are saying, and I remember when Tim Russert brought this up in the debate, he says, well, now that the polls are showing that people are interested in the economy and the foreign policy is not as important. Of course, I, you know, tried to explain to him that uh, how can you separate the two? I mean, it's the spending overseas that causes the economy goes down. When you spend the trillion dollars overseas maintaining an empire, the country has to get poorer. This is historic. Everybody knows it, it works that way. And we had a tremendous decade, a terrible decade in the 1970s, when we were paying for Johnson's war and his, his guns and butter program of the 60s. And we've done the same thing, I think, only that much worse. So we're facing major, major changes here in the economy, and the people know that their standard of living is going down. So that really invites us to explain our monetary policy, how, how inflation is so destructive to the middle class. That's what we're witnessing, and that's why we're getting a lot more attention on the economy than we did before. And the longer you stay in the campaign, as you said, in the next few months, who knows what's going to develop? Who knows what's going to happen with McCain or the economy uh, or any of it? Shifting gears into your congressional race, we need to keep you in Congress. They've been running unbelievable attack ads and big money against you. Uh, I, I, I don't want to mention him by name, but he treacherously said he supported you in the past, wasn't going to run against you. That's on record. Uh, what's the strategy? What do you need from Texans that are listening to defeat this individual? Of course, the people anywhere near, just like in all campaigns, uh, it's a little bit more confusing for us because we have two campaigns, but we also need the money to campaign You know, in the 14th District and the people near there to vote and get out and do the volunteer work. And uh, things are going going pretty well. I mean, uh, we we were getting a little weaker there because he was hitting us pretty hard. But now that we're concentrating on it, we have to prove ourselves in, in the 14th district. So we have several jobs at one time. We 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 have the education job, the long term projects, the presidential campaign, as as well as maintaining credibility here in our district. But uh, I think I think it's going to work. Uh, a year ago, he was praising me. And then, uh, and promised me he would never run against me. But all of a sudden, it's changed. So that is the important issue, just for credibility. And uh, we're actually using one of his quotes on our literature to show that he, what he really thinks, and then why did he change his mind? Because nobody ever accuses me either of flip flopping 
or that I have violated the Constitution. So when they buy it, when they oppose what I do, they have to challenge the Constitution. And just to be clear for listeners, you're keeping the presidential money is separate uh, for the presidential run, and you're now trying to raise money to defend your congressional seat. That, that is correct, and uh, that uh, is the way it's going to be because not only is that the reason they sent the money to the presidential campaign, but legally that's the way it has to be. You, I can't start spending money from one campaign in the other.